I'm going to apologize in advance for recording this episode of Sound Speeds in my car. But I feel it's important that I live up to one of the pieces of advice I'm about to give you and actually do this. So please bear with the sound. Please bear with the fact that you're going to be listening to me drive home during this video. Now, as you saw in the thumb the thumbnail, <laughs> this video is all about turnarounds. Now, what is a turnaround? A turnaround is the amount of time that you have after you finish your day at work on set and before you are due back. So if, for example, we wrapped at midnight and I was called back in tomorrow at noon, that would be a 12 hour turnaround. If I'm called back at 11, then that would be an 11 hour turnaround, a 10, 10 hour turnaround and so forth. So it's basically the amount of time you have off before you are due back on set. Now, turnarounds, if you are on a non-union show, are basically whatever they choose to give you. They could say, well, go home, sleep four hours, and we'll see you again. And that's not very good. But then on a union show, it's quite a bit different because it's regulated. Now, turnarounds on a union show are still as little as nine hours. And you may say, well, nine hours is enough to get seven hours of sleep. Is it? It's not as long as you might think, especially when you're working 12, 14, 16, 18 hours, and then you go home, and by the time you get home after running on caffeine, like five-hour energy drinks, like a lot of people I know, Zip Fizz, which you guys know that I love, or even caffeine from Coke, uh, from soft drinks, from basically anything, even coffee. People will be drinking coffee until the end of the night, taking B12 and whatever it takes to keep themselves going. And that can make it difficult for you to settle down when you get home. So let's just say that you were shooting right around the corner from your house and you have a nine hour turnaround. You finish work. Let's say you wrap up in 20 minutes. You get in your car and let's say you get home in, you know, 10 minutes later. Now you've already eaten up 30 minutes of your nine hour turnaround, which is a minimum. So now you have eight and a half hours left. Let's say you take yourself a quick shower, you get yourself ready for bed, and let's just say you're able to do all that in 15 minutes. You sleep seven hours, and then you now are down to one hour and, oh, what is it, like 15 minutes? That doesn't give you any time for you to do anything else. You wake up in the morning, let's say you brush your teeth, you get dressed, and you're able to get out the door in 15 minutes. You have yourself a 10 minute commute, and you get to work, grab your breakfast at catering. You better hope you don't have a pre-call because you're already gonna be eating in the, into that time. Now, production will tell you things like, oh, always make sure you take your turnaround because they don't wanna pay for it. But a lot of the times people feel the pressure to go ahead and come in and do whatever it takes to get your job done so that way you don't lose your job. The thing about it is though, if you're dealing with minimum turnarounds, you're most likely going to be running yourself ragged, tired all the time, and no amount of time you are laying in bed is going to seem like enough because it's everything you possibly can do to stay going at 5,000 miles an hour while you're on set, especially with long days, and then you have to go home, suddenly turn everything off, and go to sleep. Doesn't happen that easily, at least with normal humans. So you end up laying in bed, tossing and turning for a little while while you try to settle down. Now, some people will take things like NyQuil, but the problem with those is that NyQuil will kind of almost drug you and put you to sleep, which is not going to be very good for you by the time you try to settle down and then get up again. It'll knock you out real quick, but you're going to potentially be sluggish the next day. Now, I know people that will take things, you know, to try to help them sleep. They'll do different things, uh, maybe even <laughs> drink uh, some sort of alcohol to try to settle down at night. If that's part of your routine that you really need in order to settle down, then by all means do it. The most important thing for you to do 
is for you to do what it takes for you to settle down because priority one is going to be for you to get adequate sleep. I know what, what you may be thinking. I have a lot of stuff I have to do. Nothing is more important than sleep, especially if you have a minimum turnaround. Back on the early morning hours of March 6, 1997, a guy named Brent Hirschman, who is a camera assistant on Pleasantville feature that I'm sure you've heard of. Well, hopefully you've heard of. It's a good movie. He was driving home because, at least as I understand the story, they had had a whole bunch of very long days on set. 14, 16, 18 hour days. And at the end of a 19 hour day, Brent was on his way home because he wanted to make sure he was there first thing in the morning for his daughter's birthday. He ended up falling asleep behind the wheel, presumably. I mean, that's not hard to imagine when you're working long hours every single day and then you have a drive ahead of you and he drove off the road and crashed into a telephone pole and died. Now, ever since then, we have something called Brent's Rule and it is written into union contracts where if your production goes over 14 hours, even though some pro productions will will extend it as a courtesy for 13 hour days, 12 hour days, if you go overnight. Like for example, if you start at like 3 p.m. and you finish at let's say 5 a.m., they'll sometimes extend it as a courtesy, uh, even if it's less than 14 hours. But 14 hours is what it is by union contract. And what that means is that production is required to provide you with a hotel room or provide you with a drive home and then back to get your car the next day from set. So if you are working minimal turnarounds and you're exhausted and you don't feel it's safe for you to drive home, you can request a courtesy hotel. Production's not doing it out of the goodness of their own heart. What they're doing is abiding by the union contract. Now, if you say, I don't want a hotel, I wanna go home, I gotta check my animals and I gotta check mail because something should have arrived for me in the mail that I need to take to work tomorrow, that's fine too. You can say, I need to get an Uber ride home or a Lyft or whatever. Now, in times like at the time of this video, it's at the tail end of COVID-19, so we're all wearing masks and that kind of thing on set. You may not feel comfortable with getting in an Uber or a Lyft car. Now, that's fine. You can request for your hotel room. Now, the important thing to note about that is it is not going to cost you anything because production is going to pick up the cost if you're on a union show. <clears throat> now, that is the kicker right there. It doesn't matter what your turnaround is. If you wrap at, let's just say, you wrap after a 14-hour day at 10 p.m. and you say, I need to have my courtesy hotel, it doesn't matter if your turnaround is going to be bringing you back in at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever, based on minimum turnarounds, or it's gonna be a 5 p.m. call time because you're gonna be working hard nights. It doesn't matter. Production is required to pick up a hotel or provide you a drive home and then to turn around and bring you back the next day to retrieve your car. Now, the reason I say it's most important that you get sleep is because you cannot negotiate your body to stay going if it is tired. You can try to take caffeine. You can try to shake up and down, bounce up and down, turn on loud music, do whatever you want to, but your body is still going to get tired and you could get wobbly. I have been there. I almost drove off the road one time while driving home from Walking Dead after a very long week of doing long days, which was normal on that show. And then of course, doing Sound Speeds episodes in the evening, because back in the early days of Sound Speeds, I was doing one video every three days. And that was a pace that I agreed to do for the first hundred episodes. And that was something that was very difficult. So one piece of advice to you is don't do a YouTube channel if you're having minimum turnarounds. As of the time of this video, I just had a video release a week ago. And then two weeks before that, I didn't release videos. I did for the first time had to take a lapse in my release schedule because I was working such long hours. I was working at least a 14 hour day 
on set, set, well, maybe not every day, 14 hours, but we were not breaking for lunch. And my commute is over an hour to work, over an hour home from work, and I have a 30-minute pre-call. So that means that I have short turnarounds, and I have long commutes and long days, and they're not even breaking us for lunch. So there's no chance for me to sit down, relax, chill out, try to even take a nap, which a lot of people try to do during lunch times on shows. Not even an option for me. So unfortunately for me and for viewers that if you follow me and you follow my content, then you will have missed out on a couple episodes of sound speeds during those two weeks that I wasn't releasing content. But it was necessary for me because you have to prioritize. That's a big piece of advice. You have to prioritize what is important. Priority one is going to be sleep. You may say, my family, my animals, that kind of thing. Okay, I understand. But you have to keep going. You have to safely get to and from work. And you have to not rely on caffeine and stimulants and things to keep yourself going. Because there's only so much you can do to convince your body to keep going when it is tired. Haskell Wexler was a uh, director of photography. Well known. Oscar award winning even. And he made a documentary called Who Needs Sleep, where he advocates for 12 hours of work, 12 hours off of work. And this is the only industry, by the way, the film industry, that advocates for just a 12-hour day. Most other industries are trying to say, well, let's keep it below 12 hours. Well, the film industry is advocating for 12 on, 12 off, uh, because it doesn't normally happen. We will be on for 12, 14, 18 hours have very few hours off and then turn around and go back to work. So it's a big advocate, you know, big, huge movement, the 12 on, 12 off, if you ever see it. As a matter of fact, the documentary that Haskell does is on Vimeo, and I will put a link in the description for you to see it if you're interested. It's just under 90 minutes and it's fascinating. But it is important for you to prioritize what is important to you. Number one will be sleep. Number two will be probably whatever it takes you to do an unwind so that you can sleep. Because if you're going full throttle at work and relying on things like caffeine to stay going, then you're going to have to settle down at some point. If you are hurt, if you have physical therapy you need to do because of an injury, like for example, as of the time of this video, I have a foot that's bothering me a little bit. I need to probably get some insoles, change up, get new shoes, that kind of thing. But I also am doing some light PT at night and doing some flex exercises and things like that. So usually after I take a shower, I'll settle down, I'll do something. Like tonight I'll end up editing uh, this episode and piecing it together while doing the 20 minutes in the little foot brace thing that flexes my foot. I'm going to be multitasking. That is a major point here. I'm going to be multitasking. and That's one big piece of advice you need to have. Multitask whenever possible. On my way into work, on many days when I'm tired, I'll be making phone calls. And I'll be trying to line up appointments. I'll be talking and communicating with people that I wasn't able to because we were most likely going to be working at night or something. Catching up with my family members, perhaps my wife, maybe touching base with children, whoever. Maybe lining up a doctor's appointment, not maybe lining up a dentist appointment, something like that, or canceling one because they're now working on us on Saturdays, which happens on shows. On the drive home at night, if someone's awake, try give them a call a little bit. In unless you decide that in order to try to settle down, you're going to listen to a podcast or something. Now, it's not always going to be an option for you to talk to someone at 3 a.m. and calling a team member may work. But you have to also remember that sometimes people will be trying to settle down themselves, might have a short commute and listen to a podcast or just might want to listen to music or just sit there in silence and listen to the car drive home, collect their thoughts, try to shut down. You have to do what is important to you in order to settle down when you have a minimal turnaround though. What I'm going to be doing tonight is try to maximize the amount of time that I have as 
by cutting out garbage. So one of the things that I will do when I have a minimal turnaround is I'm not going to spend a lot of time goofing off, watching television, or my computer. Normally, I wouldn't even turn on my computer if I have a short turnaround. I will go home, go take a shower, jump straight in bed and set an alarm and get up and go off to work again. And that's what you basically have to do. You may say, well, I want to visit. I'm dating this girl that's just amazing and I want to talk to her for a bit. You're going to become overly tired and you're going to go to sleep go to sleep behind the wheel or you might now you may say I'm young man I'm only like 18 19 years old I'm invincible is what you're feeling but you're not and there's no way you can negotiate yourself out of being overly tired now if you say I can take something and settle down perhaps it's melatonin which is fine to help you relax. Personally, I take something with valerian root in it called Formula 303. I'll put a link down in the description if you'd like to check it out. That's something that allows your body to relax, yet if something were to happen, like an alarm goes off, you're not going to sleep through it like you would if you were on NyQuil. And you're only able to set an alarm for four and a half or five hours of sleep, and then you have to get up, and you're going to be tired in the morning and regret getting out of bed because you're going to be too tired. One of the things I will suggest also is that you get yourself uh, trained out of the habit of hitting snooze a lot. When I first met my wife, I had gotten myself into the bad habit of hitting snooze many times. I set an alarm, uh, the snooze would go off nine minutes later and then I have another alarm set off to go right after that. So after I would hit snooze, usually in my sleep, I would hit snooze again when the alarm would go off at the end of the nine minutes, then I'd hit snooze again, then I'd hit snooze again, and after a while it became an automatic thing in my sleep. I was training my body to ignore getting up and to sleep through it or to hit, continue to hit snooze. What it ended up ultimately being is a problem for me that no matter what I did, I would have to annoy myself to turn, to get, turn my body on and wake it up in the morning. So in order for me to get moving, I had to annoy myself. Usually, before I got trained out of this bad habit, I had to set multiple alarms that my body would hit snooze on until the point where they would go back to back to back. I had to mistune a radio station. I had to turn one alarm up that went off a couple of moments right after, and that was loud and would usually shock me, you know, scare me. But even sometimes I would be so tired that the mistuned radio station, which would always drive me crazy because it doesn't come through accurately, and then it was an alarm right on top of that. I had an alarm that would trigger a light that would blast me in the face because it was a, a, a heat lamp right over, or not a heat lamp, but it was very hot when it was that close, would blast me right in the face because it was over the bed. So I had that alarm. I had the alarms that were I could not hit snooze on because it was blasting the beep, beep alarm noise across the room, I had basically trained my body to to be frustrated before I'd finally get up in the mornings. Alarms would go off and I would ignore them until finally I was so annoyed with all the sound and the light in my face, I'd finally get up and I'd be grumpy for a little bit and then finally I'd you know, get moving. Not healthy though. So you want to get yourself out of the habit of hitting snooze. And I know what you're thinking. How do you do that? How do you, how do you untrain yourself? You just got to do it. Whatever method necessary. Start when you're not on a show. Set an alarm and even if it means setting that alarm really, really loud and backing it off a little bit, doing, do that so that way you can't hit snooze. Mistune the radio station. Do whatever you need to do to get yourself up. Because if you don't, you're going to sleep through it. Train yourself to get up on the weekends at a certain time if you're used to just not setting an alarm and sleeping until whenever. Do whatever you need to do to get out of that habit because that is a bad one. Now, in addition to prioritizing, you need to, as I mentioned, multitask. It's important to do both of those things so that you maximize the time you have off. It's one thing to... Be tired when you go to work and say, I need to get some coffee in the morning. I need to get some tea, some caffeine or whatever to get yourself moving in the morning. 
And it's another thing to try to keep yourself going in order to get home at night. So one of the, the first videos I released on sound speeds was a video that as of the time of this video doesn't have very many views and it's called Life Saving Catnap because it is very important that if you get in your car and you're tired, you've already been moving around, so you're probably energized to a certain degree, you're gonna be tired and you're gonna maybe get in the car and say, I'm good to drive home. But after you coast like I'm doing right now, I did have uh, my cruise control on for a bit and it's a long drive, I'm still driving down the interstate. You may listen to this sound the thump, the thump. Nice and peaceful. And doze off. Because you're saying when you get in your car, oh, I'm alert, I'm awake. But once you get in the car and you're not moving, you're sitting down, you're off your feet, you set your cruise control and you're on a long drive home in the middle of the night like I am right now, you may say, uh, you know what? I am a little bit more tired than I thought. If that is the case, pull over. I'm not suggesting pull over on the side of the interstate. That's not safe. You could easily get rear-ended by someone else that hits you because they are driving uh, overly tired themselves. Hold on one second. Let me pass these guys here. Now I'll jump back in the right lane. <laughs> Somehow I got going a little bit too fast here. <laughs> not good. Um... Now, it is important though that you find a way to self-assess your body before you leave work. What I will usually do is I'll get in the car and I'll sit there for a second and collect my thoughts. And you may say, okay, well, I'm gonna hit the, hit the road as soon as I possibly can. That way I've still got all that energy. Okay, and I'll get to that in a second. But I find personally what I'll do is I'll set ways so that way I, I know what my drive home looks like. I know if I need to deviate from my regular drive home. But one of the things that I'm doing while I'm sitting there in the car is I'm seeing how my energy drains. Because if I'm overly tired, I'm not going to be aware of it if I hit the road and start driving. So if I'm overly tired when I do my little self-assessment before I turn on the car, if I feel like I'm too tired to drive home, or I could be, I'll lean my car seat back. I have a pillow literally right here. I will take that pillow, throw it behind my head, and I will set an alarm for 20 minutes plus whatever rounds it up to the nearest 10 minutes. So let's just say right now it is uh, 2, 12 a.m. Then I would round up to the nearest 10 minutes, so 2.12 would round up to 2.20, and then I would add 20 minutes on top of that, so it'd be 2.40, I would set an alarm for that time. If I'm laying there in my car, and my eyes are awake, or I'm not able to actually doze off, chances are I'm okay to drive home. If I'm not, I'll doze off, my alarm will wake up, then I'll drive home safely, having had a nice little nap. Hence the reason why it's a life-saving cat nap. Now let's just say that you're okay to drive home. You feel like you're okay. You're going to hit the road. One of the suggestions I usually have is, uh, and I make to people, is that you have a couple of places that are safe along your drive home where you can stop. Now, here in Georgia, we have a gas station that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, called Quick Trip. It's a wonderful facility that is big, it's open, it's well lit. It's, it's always got people coming in and going out. Usually police officers will go in and out there too, so it's safe. But they also have a lot of security cameras. So one of the things that I will suggest people do is as you are driving home, know where there are a few quick trips, maybe every 10 minutes or so. So what I will do is I will make sure that I know where those quick trips are. So that if, for example, I get tired and I feel my energy draining, I will pull over at one of those quick trips. I will back into a parking space, not directly in front of the store, but I'll usually go maybe a third of the way over. So that way I'm not way over to the side and I'm not right in front of the door. And I'll back myself up, 
I'll make sure my car is locked. I'll lean my seat back and I'll take one of those 20 minute plus naps in their parking lot. Never has it ever been an issue for me to do that. But if anyone ever did come by and knock on the door, I know they're not gonna break into my car when they're in a quick trip parking lot. That's a safe place for, for me to be. With all the traffic that goes through there, no one's gonna crash into my car. If they do, it's gonna be on, on camera. People normally don't rob quick trips. So it's a safe place for me to take a nap. Just make sure your car is locked. Now, when I wake up, I drive off and all is well. The reason why I suggest someplace like Quick Trip is because it's well lit. Don't pull into a Walmart parking lot because you're like, oh, it's big and open. They have security cameras. Don't do that. Go someplace where it's well lit, where there's a lot of traffic. And you may say, well, Walmart has a lot of traffic. That's fine. I don't suggest going to a Walmart. I usually suggest going to a gas station because they have a lot of security cameras or even go to a police station. And if you see multiple parking spaces out front, you can back yourself up. One of the things I even have done in the past when I have been overly tired is I have a little sign that I don't have it anymore, but because I, I we used to put it right here in the window. And when my car was going, it, it was a little window that I had a handwritten note on it with a piece of cardstock on the back, but it said uh, something like, uh, quick cat nap or quick taking a nap uh, so that I'm safe to drive home or something like that. I forgot the exact wording that I did. Uh, I never really looked at it, but I made it a few years ago and then I didn't need it on my last show because I was always, you know, perfectly fine to drive home. I changed up my evening routine and I didn't have short turnarounds. So that helped. But if I did have short turnarounds, I would end up making one of these little notes and put it in the door. It says taking a 20, a 20 minute nap and then I'll be gone or something like that. And by doing that, it means that someone's not gonna to come to the door and look and say, oh, look at this guy here. I wonder if he's okay, knock on the window and wake me up or whatever. It's gonna be one of those things that will help me to get a continuous amount of a nap and make it actually work for me. If you pick someplace safe, it's not gonna be an issue. Now, even if you park in a police station and they come over and knock on the door and say, hey man, you can't you know, park here. Obviously don't park in something if it says it's a marked place for a police car, but if you park in the parking lot for 20, 20, 20 minutes, something like that, and they do say you can't be here or something, okay, fine, you'll move. But if you're legitly tired and you say, I'm sorry, I just wanted a safe place where I could take a quick nap so that I'm safe to drive home. I don't wanna drive on the road in an unsafe condition. I don't know why a police officer would have an issue with that. I don't know why a wall, uh, not a Walmart, a quick trip or someplace similar would have an issue with that. And if they did, you can say, I'll go inside and buy something, you know, I or say, I plan to go inside and buy something or, you know, whatever before you leave. Now, let's just say you don't feel comfortable doing that, taking a nap someplace. In that case, then pull over, perhaps in a gas station, get up and move around. It's not enough to pull up and sit in your car and say, okay, I'm awake. I'm going to now drive again. That's not good because I do know a sound mixer who drove home. He pulled up into his driveway, did not put the car in park, did not pull the handbrake. He made it all the way into his, into his uh, carport and then said, ha, ah, I'm home, dozed up behind the wheel, drove into his house. So the suggestion I usually have is if you're gonna be driving home and you are questioning whether or not you can even make it to your quick trip, if you are in stop and go traffic, pull the handbrake, put your car in neutral because it's better that someone honk and wake you up or whatever from behind if you can't pull over. I mean, obviously the safe thing is for you to pull over on the side of the, the you know, road, pull off on an exit and find a place, a gas station. If it's, if you worked overnight and it's now light out and, and, you know, pull over someplace safe, even if the sun's in your face, do it. But the most important thing is on that is to pull the handbrake, 
<laughs> before you uh, doze off behind the wheel in stop and go traffic. I don't trust myself. I don't trust anyone who is tired. And I recommend that you do that because if, for example, you stay awake and you're like, well, you know what? I don't need to put my car in neutral and then pull the handbrake. I'm awake. Okay, but what if? It's still a safety thing you should do anyway because if you happen to doze off and then someone honks their horn and wakes you back up, you're fine to move. If someone, if you're, if you're in such bad condition that you are dozing off and they're honking the horn behind you, you would prefer not to drive into the car in front of you. And even if you say, you know what, it's, it's such a process. It means that as soon as I go again, and stop and go traffic, all I'm gonna be doing the entire time is pulling the handbrake and then putting my car in neutral or drive or pulling the handbrake, fine. You know what, if you're tired, it's gonna be giving you an extra purpose, extra routine, extra something to do that's gonna keep you going, keep you a little bit more alert. When I first started this drive home, right now, I was quite alert and now I'm starting to get a little bit hazy brained. But because I'm actively talking, I'm gonna stay alert for the next, oh geez, where am I? Next 20 minutes or so before I get home. I have over a 60 minute, uh, over a 60 minute drive every single day in no traffic, which is good times. So let's summarize here and in this video because I know it's gone long and I do apologize about that. Documentary called Who Needs Sleep is gonna help you to watch the state of the film industry and how producers will usually advocate for, you know, sleep is not important. Well, during COVID-19 times, they realized sleep was important and are trying to stick to a shorter work day. But who knows what that's gonna be as soon as COVID-19 is over and people no longer are being tested routinely or no longer being held to the shorter hours because I'm sure producers are gonna go back to working the long hours. I've even worked on shows since the pandemic, um, you know, uh, finished, the shutdowns finished, I should say, and things opened back up. I've worked on shows that have worked to 16 hours a day and then turned us around with a 10 hour turnaround and brought us back in 16 more hours. It's ridiculous, but it does happen. Now, it is important for you to prioritize what is important to you and you must put sleep first because you need to rest and not live off of caffeine, not live off of stimulants and things in order to keep, your, keep yourself going as much as possible, even though I know it may be a, necess a, necess a necessity, blah, if you, are if you are going long hours, especially if you're working overnight. Your body's not designed to do that. I've worked on shows before where I've had shorter turnarounds, even though they've been appropriate turnarounds, like 10 hours. I went in on a show one time, it was a noon call time. We worked until we lost the sun, and then we worked overnight. When we lost the night, then we finally wrapped. But that was a long day. It was something like a 18 hour day and 19 hours, something like that, as the sun was coming up, we're saying, please, son, hurry up and get here. And we were hoping and praying the director didn't say, oh, I have an idea for another shot that we didn't get before the sun set. Let's see if we can steal this while we have light. I've also worked on shows that have, we've been shooting night sequences, and when the sun comes up, they keep on shooting, and they're like, it's going to be day for night, and we're like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You're still going. And that kind of thing is crazy, but it does happen. And, and you're hoping that the sunlight will save you, but it doesn't. You're just going to add filtration or something like that and keep on shooting. But you need to prioritize what you do with your off time, and you need to not do anything that is that is not critical to you to get to sleep. So if that means you need to jump on a treadmill and then shower in order to do your evening routine to settle down, fine, do that. If it means that you need to Meditate, you sit down and you close your eyes and you meditate before or after a shower, do that. If you have to do PT because you have to work out first thing in the morning and do an exercise routine before you leave for, the, for work in the morning, you need to build that into your awake, uh, your awake time in the morning also. 
obviously commute time too. And you might need to if you have a long commute, like the show I'm on right now is a 60 plus minute commute. And that means that two hours plus of my turnaround every single day is gonna be chewed up by my drive time. And that doesn't include that when they call wrap, we still have about a 30, 45 minute wrap out every single day because we're doing a whole lot of different things. We're adding speakers, doing long cable runs. We have multiple mics out. We have a lot of things we have to pull back in. And then in the, ne in the next day, when we come back in, I'll have a 30 minute pre-call and that's cool. I appreciate having that, but it does cut into my, my time off. Also, at some point, I do need to get tested you know, COVID-19 still going on at the time of this video. So I'll need to get tested. And technically you should do that while you're on the clock, but then that cuts into our pre-call time. Or I have to walk away from set in the middle of the day and we're go, go, go. Once you start, there is no stopping. So I can't really do that very effectively. So I would prefer to do that before work, even though it's on my own time. So that way I don't fall behind in my performance or put my department, you know, behind for some reason. It's a judgment you call you have to make for yourself. I can't make that call for you. But you need to prioritize what it is for you to do in order for you to settle down. Preferably, don't do anything that is going to hinder your ability to get up in the morning. That could be getting yourself into the bad habit of ignoring your alarm when it goes off. It could mean taking something like like NyQuil that's going to prevent you from waking up without being sluggish in the morning. Try not to take caffeine after a certain time if you can avoid it. Take a cat nap before you leave set at night if you feel like you're tired. Have yourself places to stop on your drive home so that way you can safely take a nap if you get too tired over your drive home. Maybe even if you have a long drive and you find yourself overly tired, you might need to find yourself a bed and breakfast once per week or one of the things I used to do is contact a local church and ask if there's an elderly person that might have a big house and they might be willing to let you sleep in their guest bedroom or something like that and you pay them you know fifty dollars or whatever uh, which would help them out if they're on a fixed income and they'll be you know happy to let you in or, or to leave a key out for you and then you just you know leave the bed or whatever but you could sleep um, you could sleep at their house, shower, and you have yourself a bag or something, and you're, you're able to give them a little bit of money. You're able to still recover yourself enough for, for the day and do that maybe one day per week. I also have worked on shows that have been an hour and a half away from home, and I've gotten just in the habit of listening to a technical document or an audio book or something like that and been perfectly happy with it because uh, I've been amped up and then listening to good stuff. But there have been also times when people have uh, that I know of have wanted to maximize their sleep time and they have gotten hotel rooms that are closer to set that are closer down there they've gotten a bed uh, uh, they've made a deal with like an Airbnb to become a routine customer in exchange <clears throat> for routine stay so like they know that they're always going to have somebody staying there Monday through Thursday and in exchange for a four day a week you know, visit, don't go through Airbnb anymore where there could be potentially be fees or whatever, make friends with the owner, get a price discount for a multiple day stay. You can also make negotiations with people like that if you're going to be staying at their house for an extended period of time. You can maybe even make those kind of deals. Or if you are going long days every single day, 14 plus hours, take production up on the hotel room or take the drive home via Uber or via Lyft, whatever the case may be, and take advantage of that. It is there for your safety. I don't care if you feel like you don't need to do that. If you are going back to the stages again tomorrow and you're inside of a protected lot, take advantage of it. It is there for you and your safety. Plus, if enough crew members do that, and production is constantly working you 14 plus hours a day, maybe when they start to get all those expense, uh, the expenses of the, the hotel rooms, the Uber and Lyft drives over the course of, of time, it starts happening more and more and more. Maybe they'll say, geez, we don't like this production cost. It's a union contract thing though. They got to do it. They may say, okay, fine. You know what? Let's not do a 16 hour day anymore. Let's start 
cutting it down to 13, you know, hours even, you know, with lunch, you know, so it's, you know, 12 on, 12 off, plus lunch technically. And that might actually drive some of the production uh, behavior simply because they're going to want to cut down on the cost. So there you have it. One more 3BO video where I'm talking about uh, something that is important for a boom operator and a sound person in general, even though you may say, well, it doesn't really pertain to sound. It does simply because as a boom operator, you need your rest. You need to have your downtime because if you don't, you're going to be overly tired. You're going to pull a muscle. You're going to end up doing something that's going to hurt you badly and put yourself out perhaps on workers' comp, perhaps on disability. Who knows? But it's going to potentially hurt you. And you can't live on your feet, on set, being alert at 5,000 miles an hour, holding a pole over your head and routing you know, cables and, and doing whatever you need to do for your job when you are that tired. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.